All right, luckily I had a EPH CP4M in the van. So EPH do a <coughs> range of different programmers or programmable thermostats and stuff. Ooh. <sighs> fit the wrong thing, haven't I? I was meant to fit a time switch, but I fitted a mains operated programmable thermostat. Right, let me take that off and get a time switch. How are we doing everyone? Thanks for tuning in to today's video. Now, if you saw my post from, was it yesterday? You probably saw I had a pretty bad case of burnout and I went to bed Friday night just shivering, shaking, aching all over. I literally felt like I'd been hit by a bus and I thought I was coming down with a bug, but it wasn't. I just needed a good night's sleep because my sleep average over the last week was only about five and a half hours which isn't great and I just think it's because I've been I've not really been able to switch off and that's because work has been a little bit quiet the last few weeks and then recently it's picked up again and it's like buses you know when they say you wait for one bus and then three come out at the same time and that's kind of how it is and I think it was just me trying to manage things in here and not really being able to switch off um, properly which is led to and especially on Friday I had a crap job which just was a nightmare and it didn't help so yeah I literally I, I can't remember the last time I, probably when I had COVID is the last time I sweated that bad where literally the duvet we had to take a dry cleaners today I've completely drenched the bed but I'm glad it's nothing more than that and I'm just going to need to manage my sleep a bit better. But moving on to the uh, today's video itself, you're going to have to bear with me because there's a lot of talking from me, but it's because I'm explaining what I'm doing as I'm going on. And especially if you're not confident or not used to working on wiring systems, this is probably going to be quite a good video because I try and talk through step by step how I'm fault finding uh, the process of this uh, on this job. Because we've got an issue with external controls, there's multiple issues, so it's just how I work my way through each part of the process to try and work out what was at fault and then how I rectify it as well. So hopefully you find this video helpful and useful and if any of you are going on to do sort of breakdowns on wiring systems, then this will probably help you out a bit. Just it's just how I go through the process. You may have your own process, you may develop your own process, but this might be a good sort of stepping stone for you to make that first move into uh, breakdowns or fault finding on wiring systems. So let's go on with the video. I hope you enjoy it. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you all on Wednesday. Hope you've all, ha hope you've all had a good weekend. Take care. Okay, so we've got here an ideal logic system boiler. It's on an S plan, so we've got two zone valves here. This is meant to be controlling the hot water. This is meant to be controlling the heating. But customers are saying that when the heating goes off, the heating doesn't actually go off, the boiler stays on. So I need to check what's going on. Apparently, this has not been working for a while, and they're under the assumption that the heating and the hot water are linked together, which shouldn't be anyway. At the moment, doesn't look like there's any demand on the receiver because that flame light is off. Obviously, this is off, but from what I can see here, that's it says hot, so I'm assuming that's hot water. Obviously, I'm not going to go on the assumption, but we're going to test it. But that says hot, so I'm assuming that's hot water. That zone valve is currently open. The heating zone valve is currently closed. See, that's on the A. So I need to find out what's going on with the wiring. Luckily, the wiring center is right here. All the controls are here, so I'm going to do some investigation, some diagnosis, find out what's going on. So this is just a single, yeah, single channel programmer. So I've got one in the van. If we need to swap it out, we can swap that out. But yeah, I need to just basically find out what's going on, what's how it's been wired up, how it's been linked out, and this, that, the other. And then I will come back and explain. 
what I've found and see where to go from there. First things first, I'm going to whip this open and I want to check right now with no demand on anything. Do we have power on the orange? Do we have a switch live demand from there? And if we do, then I can start working my way backwards and try and find where the fault lies on which component. Should be an interesting one. So yeah, let's get into it. Right, I've got the camera balanced on top of the boiler, so I'm hoping it doesn't fall. So I've got the wiring center open. First thing I wanna do is, uh, earth terminals are here. Now let's see how we got power on the switch light, which is this one here. Okay, I've got 240 volts on switch live. Why do I have 240 volts on switch live when there's no demand? Let's check the browns from each sound valve now. So I don't know which sound valve is which at the moment. So I'm just gonna check power on the browns to each of the sound valves. So same thing again, that one, nothing on that one, okay? Now, where is my other sound valve brown? Excuse the rumbling, it's uh, my stomach trying to digest my lunch. Let me try and find where the other brown is. So that one is not calling. So I don't know which one that one is for yet because it's wooden trunking, so I'll find that, I'll trace that back in a minute. The next brown I'm trying to look for is coming from, where is it, where is it? Why is it, ah, here we go. That's coming into number four. So let's see how we got power. Is it number four? One, two, three, four, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, saying that I've got, was I looking at the right one? No, that's, what's this white cable? Why do we have, ah, uh, uh, it's a 28 mil two port. That's why we've got power on the one. Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's that's just not linked to anything. So that's perfectly fine. So this number four here is our brown coming from, that's going to be on the heating zone valve because that white cable there is coming out of the same group of cables as this. So and we've got 28 mil two port on the heating side and a 22 mil two port on the hot water side. So that means this one here, that brown that I tested first is coming off the hot water zone valve. This brown here, that's coming off the heating zone valve, which we don't have any power. Okay, that's fine. So we've got nothing on there. We've got nothing on there, but we've got power on the oranges, which we shouldn't do because nothing's calling right now. So let's now have a look at the zone valves and see what's going on there. Right, okay, so easiest thing. Let's not assume what cable's what. Let's just, let's actually see which one's which. So I was right, yeah, that cable there is the big thick cable coming from there. So the second, test that I've done was off the heating zone valve. The first test that I've done was off the hot water zone valve. So that's fine. Now let's whip these off. And usually there's a little button or tab to take these off. I hope these aren't the uh, the ones where I should just pop off. There should be a little button or clip oh, unless these are the, no, they shouldn't be the wet pocket ones. It's not that old a system. Let me find out what I need to do to get these envelopes off, whether they just need to be pulled off. Am I going to get doused in water or is there actually a button or clip somewhere that I'm missing or maybe they're screwed in. Let me try and find out about that first. Right, a little bit of a progress update. So I managed to take the head off that synchro motor. Now the actual synchro motor is jammed solid. Like this one, the hot heating one, you can move that across and back and that's fine. This one, as soon as I took the motor off, the spring has flipped back. Oh, I thought I was hot, it wasn't. Um, but 
the cog on the synchro motor just doesn't move. So as soon as I took the synchro motor off, the spring over there pinged back. And now, if I test on the orange, I shouldn't get power now, hopefully, and that should give us some sort of headway in terms of coming to resolve this issue. So, one on the earth. Yeah, and oranges are there. Nothing. Good. So, now we know that the hot water zone valve was creating a fault and it was creating a constant demand. So now we need to change the synchro motor for the hot water zone valve. And then I need to find out what's going on with the programmer in terms of what's controlling the hot water zone valve. So first I'm going to change the synchro motor on that and then I'm going to do a bit more investigation and find out what's going on with what's controlling it and see if I can get this up and running how it's supposed to be with two separate timers. So normally, obviously, you'd have a twin channel programmer and then you'd have two stats. You'd have your cylinder stat and then you'd have your room thermostat. Whereas on this one, they've got... <coughs> excuse me. They've got a programmable, wireless programmable room stat for the heating, which is fine. And then they've just got a time switch and obviously there'll be a cylinder stat on the unvented cylinder as well. So let me change the synchro motor first and then I'll find out what's going on with this. Right, I don't know what just happened. My camera just decided to shut itself down. So I'm going to explain all that again. So I've got the time switch faceplate off on this because I just wanted to see what was going on behind here. So they're using this as another junction box and we have to fuse first. So we've got two neutrals, two lives two earths that's then going into the wiring center which is absolutely fine nothing wrong with that got a link between live and common and then this black cable here is our switch live now remember this time switch is being used for the cylinder stat so if i follow this cable out into here which is this black cable here which is a number 10 that's linked over to this brown which i've made an assumption that that's our cylinder stat cable because it goes up there Unvented cylinders on the other side of this wall, uh, which is absolutely fine. And I can confirm that is our cylinder stack cable because if I follow the blue, which is our switch live or call from the cylinder stack, that's then linked over to the brown on the hot water two port. Follow that back just to confirm that's the hot water two port. So we've identified cylinder stack cable, we've identified what's going on with this. And then from our heating receiver, following that cable around to here, red is going to be our permanent live, which is going into number three there, which is linked over into the greys here, which is also then linked into there, which goes into our permanent live feed, which is that brown cable there, which comes back onto this and comes into there. So we know that's our common, oh sorry, that's our permanent live for the receiver there. The yellow here, if you follow that, that's our switch live to the heating zone valve. So, and which means then that obviously neutral is neutral, earth is earth, and they must have put a link between live and A inside here. And then you will have the yellow cable coming from B up through here. I mean, I'll open it and prove it just to be sure, but from I can suss that out just by looking at the wiring center here. So that yellow cable is our switch live which is in number two, links over to this brown, which is our, that one, bottom one. That's a hot water one. Bottom one is the heating zone valve. Let's just get this open just so that we have peace of mind. Get open. So remember I said red should be live, permanent live. Blue should be neutral. There'll be a link between live and A and yellow will be in B. Bingo. So we know that's correct. Right, I'll screw that back on in a minute. Now, with this receiver, or the time switch, sorry, I thought it might be a battery powered one and the batteries may have run out and that's why there's no display on there, but it's not, it is a mains one. And 
even though we've got power going to it, there's no display on there. So I'm assuming that's gone faulty. So I'm going to see if I've got a mains time switch on the van. Hopefully I do. And if I do, then we can get this sorted out and test the heat and hot water, make sure they've got independent control again. So let me go and see if I've got one in the van. All right, luckily I had a EPH CP4M in the van. So EPH do a range of different programmers or programmable thermostats and stuff. Ooh. Fit the wrong thing, haven't I? I was meant to fit a time switch, but I fitted a mains operated programmable thermostat. Right, let me take that off and get a time switch. Right, let's try that again. This is what I'm meant to be fitting the single time switch, one's on time switch, the EPH A17. So I'm going to take that off again, put it back in the box because in my uh, haste I picked up the wrong thing and luckily I had the right thing in the van anyway but I just picked up the wrong one because all the boxes you can see they all look pretty similar and I didn't read that it said mains operate programmable thermostat that's what I needed luckily I still had the right one hopefully the back plate's the same so I should just be able to change the face plate over and fire it up again all right that's better luckily back plates were exactly the same so I literally just popped the old face off and put that one on so now let's give it some power we want to, that, see look, that's calling already. Now, if I turn that off, uh, let me set the, I think it wants me to set the time and everything. Because right now, it's not going to be doing anything. If I do off, Yeah, that's still calling at the moment. So I think I need to set the time and everything on this and then come back to it and then I can test it properly. Okay, that's all been set and I've tested everything and it's all working. So right now, obviously hot water demand is off. If I, do you know what, let me set the camera up here. I'm not going to be able to record both the Zong valve and the wiring center, but I think the wiring center is probably what you want to see because that's what's going to, how did I have this camera set up again now? Right, hopefully you can see. So, where were we? So right now, all demands are off. This is our cylinder stat cables, brown and blue. So right now, the programmer is off for hot water. So we've got nothing on there. Let me boost the hot water. We should get to 30 on there in a minute once that clicks on there we go that's then sending switch live down to there and then we've got the brown which is this one for a hot water 2 port which we've got power and then oranges we've got power now remember we were getting power constantly even with no demand now if i turn the hot water demand off as soon as that zone valve shuts there we go, power's gone. So now we no longer have that issue of the boiler constantly firing. That little bleep is just where I'm moving the probes around. Now heating side, let's try the same. So this was our heating zone valve. So at the moment, we've got nothing on there, which is correct. Now I'm gonna manually fire the receiver. We've got 240 on there. That's motoring over, the zone valve's motoring over, and we should in a moment, there we go, power on the switch live. And now if I kill the power for the receiver, wait for that zone valve to shut again, there we go, this power's gone. So, we had two faults here. We had a problem with the hot water zone valve, which the synchro motor was well, it was buggered, it was burnt out. So it was constantly holding the zone valve in the on position. And on these Drayton ones, when they go on, they actually make the micro switch. So the boiler was getting a constant demand all the time, regardless of whether you were calling for heat or hot water or not. Um, but that's all been sorted now. Uh, the timer wasn't working for the hot water side, so I've replaced that as well. So that's all working, time's been set, everything's been tested. Have a little tidy up, get up here, on to the next one.